السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله اللهم أكبر اللهم أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد الله إلى إلا الله شهد الله إلى إلا الله شهد محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للسلام حيا للسلام حيا للفلاح
to the faith of his followers or his dependents. Dear brothers and sisters, let's be open and clear. I have been privately approached, local wise and in other communities as well. Some families express concerns, directly or indirectly, that their children are showing no interest in Islam, especially when they reach the age of the youth or the age of teenager. And this is not only here, this is here and elsewhere, so much so that you may be surprised when you look at the statistics that is done by Muslims and non-Muslim sources alike, that one out of four Muslims who were born in the U.S. will end up leaving Islam. And this is according to the magazine The Economist, and according to the a research that is done by the Pain Institute. In addition to that, large number of this percentage, 25%, one out of four Muslims who were either born or raised here, large percentage of this 25% hide this feeling. I mean, they exist, but they don't want to disclose that until maybe they become on their own or because they're fearing the consequences of, of they disclose it to their families or to their communities. This is a fact, this is a reality that we have to deal with. The atheism is rising, and in one way or another, somehow it is being weaponized against Islam by some far-right groups of some other faith, not knowing that this is going to backfire at them too. Because atheism goes against all religions. Not only against Islam. Taking an advantage of some of the uh, discrepancy or the inconsistency between Islam and the way Islam is being practiced as maybe one of the reasons people will back off from practicing Islam or from believing in Islam. Hundreds of reasons, maybe tens of reasons people are showing. It could be because of a personal struggle or a family struggle. It could be because of the feeling that Islam is restricting you from doing things that you would like. Why can't I do this? Why can't I have a girlfriend? Why can't I work in this particular place? Why can't I do this? Why is Islam is holding me back? It's a free world. I'm free to do whatever I want. Why am I created? Am I created to suffer? Or it could be because I want to answer questions that go unanswered oftentimes. And I believe that this is the factor, if this is the cause, then this is the fault of the parents or the leaders of the community, because this question must have answered. Questions like, why did God allow evil? Why did God allow sickness and diseases? Why did God allow suffering? Who created God? A lot of questions that there is an answer to each and every single one of them. And that's the reason why the people leave the religion. That there's something can be done about it. It could be because of a personal struggle, as I said. Or it could be because of revolting against a situation or reaction to an injustice either in the community or in the family or a global injustice. A tragic event that has that befalls you, befalls some of your loved ones. And as a reaction, you ended up disbelieving that a God exists. Or maybe because a conflict, would you think there is a conflict, if you think there is a conflict between the religion and science, and finding yourself unfit, if you follow any religion, not only Islam will be unfit, not matching the modern world, and that the religion will hook you and hold you back, from going to going into that, you know, following that, uh, uh, the mainstream of people who are, you know, embarking the flow of the science, thinking that Islam will hold you back. Many reasons could lead to this growing phenomena, worrying phenomena of atheism. Something could be done about it, and maybe we can do nothing about it in some cases. In some cases, yes, there's something can work out. 
something can be worked out. Something can, can be done. And in some other cases, nothing can be done. If it's about leadership, if it's about true model, then you wouldn't find prophets whose own children became unbelievers. Like Prophet Nuh for example. Like Prophet Ibrahim, whose father did not follow him. Like some of the spouses of prophets, like Prophet Lut. And Prophet, the wife of Prophet Lut, Nuh and Prophet Lut, they did not follow him. So not only because the lack of the rule model or the lack of the leadership, it could be because of other reasons. But the most often or the most frequently used excuse, especially by the youth, especially by our youth, the dear age group, the dearest age group to our hearts. May Allah preserve them and protect them all. We love them so much. Those are the future, not only of this community, but the whole world. The most frequently used excuse is that I believe in science. Wallah, I believe in science. I believe in what I can see, what I can touch. Don't tell me that someone out there exists and I have to believe in him. I believe in everything that I can see. Well, if this is the excuse, this is, the, by the way, the most overwhelming used reason among the youth. I believe in evolution. I believe in evolution. I don't believe that something out there that I don't see in control. Well, if this is the case, if this is the case, by Allah's will, this is very easy to refute. Alhamdulillah. The, the good news is, we belong to a religion, Alhamdulillah, that is going parallel side by side, actually leading the way to science. A religion that's leading the way to science. Huh? A religion that hundreds and hundreds of its holy scripture ends by saying, don't you reason, don't you think, don't you see, don't you look. Huh? If you believe in science and that this whole world came to exist as a result of an explosion that's called the Big Bang, the Big Bang Theory. This is science. And this whole universe came to exist. We agree with you, there's nothing wrong with that. There's an explosion happening that's called the Big Bang. My question is to you, who made that explosion? Did it make itself? And assuming that it makes itself, let's follow the sequence of your thought. Let's follow logic. Let's talk logic. Let's talk sense. If this is the reason. If it made itself and exploded and the universe came to exist, would you find a, a, a universe that's well balanced, that everything's going in harmony, that nothing goes off track, that Shamsi and Baghdad and Tudrik and Tamar and Allah Yusabi from the heart, that the sun would never go off track, nor the day will be before the night. You will never find today, for example, 5 o'clock p.m., you find the sun rising again at 5 p.m. It never happens, and it will never happen. Who made that system? Who designed that system? Would you believe? Would you believe? And I want you to give me your hearts and your minds and your logic, and I believe that everyone in front of me now, alhamdulillah, is well intelligent person. Would you believe that an explosion happened in a publishing company or a printing company? And as a result of this explosion, you found a printed book that is well authored, well organized, designed into units, subunits, and chapters, index, footnotes, sequence of thoughts, a great story. And every chapter is in order. If you take one chapter out, you'll feel, you'll feel that something is missing here. Would you believe that because of the explosion that happened in this printer, this book came out? Would you believe that? Yes or no? Would you mind allowing me to believe in that? Or you must believe that there's someone that authored this book and spent a lot of time and effort, tries and drafts and edits a lot of things. One try, second try, third, and then finally he gave it to the printer and the printer printed out. That's what you believe. So what would you then believe that after the explosion that brought this universe to existence, 
You find a universe that's well balanced and everything goes in, har goes in harmony. That nothing goes off track. That nothing goes like a chance unorganized. Huh? Creature live in a warm weather can never live in a cold weather. Creature live in a cold, freezing weather can never go in the warm. If they go to the warm weather, they will die. Sea creature, animal creature live in like salt water. Uh, salt water. Others live in the fresh water. Others live in the, the mingling or the barrier between the two seas. If they go anywhere, they will die. A balanced universe that the sun comes closer to the to, 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 to Earth one inch. The whole earth will burn. And if it goes far away from the earth for one inch, by one inch, the whole earth will freeze. Who controls them? Would you mind allowing me to believe that a building built itself? Whenever you see a system, there's someone designed the system. Whenever you see a decoration, you walk in a hole, you find mashallah, nice decorated, nice decorated, nice and decorated place. You become so impressed huh, with the details. The wood floor, whatever floor you have, the ceiling, everything is nice and neat. And then we'll say, oh, well, well, everything happened by itself. Immediately you will ask, who is the, who is the engineer behind this great decoration? You will admire him. And you want to see him, and the first thing you will see, we tell him, a great job. Right? Would you believe that the human, the human being, and we have a lot of doctors here, this human body made itself? Well, well, well there's an answer that, you know, Alhamdulillah, now we're living in 2021. This is, the, this is the age of the robots. The age of the robots. Now, robots, by the way, 50 years from now, you'll find robots in the streets walking, doing everything. Especially after the COVID, uh, after the COVID world. Now, robots are getting involved in many things. They get the, the, uh, you know, missions and, 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 and tasks that are dangerous to the human being, like in military tasks, like going searching for things, objects underwater, even that in the entertainment world, even in the politics, the world of politics, some world leaders, believe it or not, we have robots that exactly looks like them attending public events for the fear of the assassinations. And even they speak, they let them program to speak a few words on their own, huh? the same voice so that people believe that they are, they are there. And they are robots. And I'm sure you have seen robots introducing or hosting public events. I'm sure you I'm have seen robots. Would you believe that this robots, and the more advanced the robot is, the more that you will admire the manufacturer of this robot, right? Would you believe that this robot made itself? Who designed it? Who put the materials together? Who put the hardware together? And after the hardware, who designed the software that makes it work? Did it make itself? That if you don't believe that it makes itself, what would you believe that the human body, which is way more complicated than any robot, made itself? And that's what Allah says, أَفْيَأَنْفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُقْصِرُونَ The signs are proofs inside of you. Don't you see it? The Qur'an was not afraid. The Qur'an was not worried. The Qur'anic address was not worried about the outcome of urging people to, to think and reflect. It was not worried because the Qur'an knows that if you go and reflect and think, you will come back positive. The outcome of your thinking will come back, definitely, because that's what the mind will believe, what the human nature will believe. And if you say, oh, well, I believe in evolution, that human beings were, they were monkeys before, years ago, and they became human. They evolved, and they became human. Well, I agree with you, I agree with you, Allah, if the evolution is that doesn't go, who told you that the evolution is against the religion? Who told you that? It's one of the tools, if it's proven to be a scientific fact, if it is, I'm not sure if it's a fact, I believe it's a theory. If it's a fact, it is one of the tools of how Allah creates His people, His, His creation. 100 years ago, or 50 years ago, the robots were very basic and simple. Huh? You, you right there and there find out that this is a robot. Now the robots are, are well advanced, they just like, look exactly like the human. They evolved, they evolved too. They underwent some evolution too. Did they evolve by themselves? Or someone made them evolve? Or a company that upgraded them? Well, if you were in a certain creation, in the past, who made that biochemistry system? Who made that, uh, that biology, to, uh, whatever that system is, to make people, creatures, evolve to another state? Who made that? 
All these questions. If you're excused about science, Alhamdulillah, we're in a religion. We are in a religion that leads the science. Then the Quran invites everyone to go to go and look. Those who reflect, those who think of, those who ponder over the creation of the heavens and earth, you must come back a believer. This is how we show Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim, the creation, the kingdom, or the creation of the heavens and earth, so he can be among those who are certain. You will never come back in a negative way because this is what the human nature believes. You believe that in the science. This is a fact, this is a science. Causality. Everything, there is a cause for everything. Nothing happens by itself. There are a lot of things that you believe in them without seeing them. You believe in gravity, you don't see gravity. Do you see gravity? I don't think so. But yet you believe in it. You believe in electricity, you don't see electricity. You believe that the mother nature created people. Who is the mother nature? Are the mother nature of the trees? Or the clouds? Can you define the mother nature to me? So I want to find the mother nature speaks. Did, it, did she speak? Is she a male or female, by the way? Why she's not the father nature? Why do you have to put mother nature? This is gender inequality again. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there are, if the role, or if the cause, or if the excuse is science, alhamdulillah, this is done deal. If it's a science. If you feel that Islam is restricting you from doing things that you would like, don't leave the religion because of that. And if you think, okay, I believe that God exists, alhamdulillah. Well, I believe that God exists. Yes, you make, you make sense to me. The science, made, Islam makes sense, or the, I mean, I make sense. Now I believe that God exists, but how do I know? That Islam is the religion of the truth. There are hundreds of religions out there. There are Christianity, Judaism, and every religion has subsects. And the Muslims themselves are just, you know, divided into many sects. How do I know if I was born Christian, I would have been Christian now. If I was born Jew, I would have been Jew now, Jewish by now. If I was born whatever, I would have been just following what my parents were giving me. How do I know that Islam is the right religion? Well. Well, if you believe that God exists, if you believe that the book has an author, if you believe that the robot has a manufacturer that made it, then this creator, that you believe in him, since you said you believe in him, would not leave you alone. He would claim his creation, right? The, oh, the book that you admired, that you enjoyed reading, that you never believed it was a result of the explosion of this printer, you will find that oh, the author signed his name in this book. This book is authored by me. He will not let you like wander by yourself, right? The same thing. God did the same thing. God, the way that he did this is he chose people. He chose people and he gave them instructions and manuals, you want to call them, whatever you want to call them, and he sent them to us to tell us that everything that here you're enjoying is the creation of God. Those people, we call them messengers. Huh? Those people, we call them messengers. And those messengers historically proven that they exist. History proves that they exist from Adam all the way through Muhammad, peace be upon them. There was someone called Jesus, for example. There was someone called Jesus. Huh? A lot of people believed in him. Billions and billions of Muslims and Christians, Christians, they both believed in him in a different way then there must have been someone actually lived and his name was Jesus and he did things that made people wonder how is he doing and those people brought, brought to us they brought to us what? miracles and they claimed and they said we were sent by him the creator of the heaven and earth and so you should follow us and they brought forth to us miracles from all, all the way from Adam until until Muhammad peace be upon them. And you say, okay, well those people perform miracles. I did not see those miracles. Well, it benefited the people who have seen those miracles. When Moses split the sea, I wasn't there. Can I see the video of it? I, I wasn't there. When Isa raised the dead, okay, well, whatever, I wasn't there too. The people, they believed. Can I see the same thing now? 
When God chose the last messenger, peace be upon him, and he gave him something called the Qur'an. And this Qur'an records all the miracles of the previous messengers. And tell you, you have to believe in them equally because they all sent by me. And you cannot believe in one and disbelieve in one. And in this book, he plays miracles and proves logical, scientific, arts, in all fields, that if you want to have a miracle, then you have to shed emphasis on this book. And you will find a book that talks about science, talks about marital relationship, talks about family issues, talks about economy, talks about politics, talks about warfare, talks about peace, talks about morality, talks about a lot of things in a small, tiny 600 pages book without a single scientific error, without anything that you can hold against it. Unchanged, Allah preserved it for you. So you can find the proof until the day of judgment and will never, no one will be ever able to change anything in it. This is just for you. And if you want to have more proofs, then you need to give more time and effort. And if this is the case, then this is the responsibility of the parents and the responsibility of the leaders of the community. To allow that to our youth, that all of all you have, that was the first one, that was the first one, that was the first one. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi, amma ba'd. Dear brothers and sisters, there are many strategies and there are many ways that we can follow all of us as, a, as one team. This growing or this fear or this rising of atheism. It's not the responsibilities of Imam or the Masjid. Do not blame anyone, especially the, the, the community leaders or maybe the parents for that. If you see inconsistency between Islam, uh, between the practice of Islam, do not blame Islam. Do not blame, try to make a difference, try to differentiate between the value and the one who holds this value. Huh? Between the quality and the one who possesses this quality. If the one is misusing, is abusing this quality, do not blame the quality itself. And I gave this example tens of times before. If a doctor or a surgeon made a mistake in the surgery and the patient died, would you believe would you disbelieve in science? Would you disbelieve in medicine? No. Because you know this is an individual mistake. If a group of people, if a community, if a, if, if a country, if a family say something and they do something of inconsistency, do not blame the whole religion for it. Do not blame the whole religion for it. And finally, the brothers and the sisters, no matter what you do, it's what Allah wants at the end. But there are some tools, there are some means that are left for us to, to, to utilize, to execute. And that's what we're talking about here. There are some planning, planning and strategies that we must put in place, and everyone should put his hand, hand to hand together to make sure these strategies are effective and to use them to preserve our youth from falling into this. There is a, a, a group now for those who fear this, it was also a concern. There is a group, now there are, you, you heard of, of, of a Muslim circle of North America, ICNA? You heard of that, right? Uh, there is a group called the Ex-Muslims of North America. Are growing now, are on the rise. They have their advertisement on billboards in some of the states. So we should put our hands together, protect ourselves, as Allah says, "Qul and fusakum Protect ourselves and our families and our loved ones and our communities. That's easy. Allah is easy. In some situations, it's easy. In some other situations, maybe nothing can be done. Anyone at any point, at any given point of time. And I'm sorry, I'm taking long. I know that. The school is off now, so everyone is free. At any given time, everyone will come to a point that he or she, or she will question his own faith. And it is Allah's will whether he will be strengthened, this person will be stabilized on the faith or not. What we can do is something that's left for us to, to, to execute, to utilize, huh? to apply. But it may work and it may not work at the end. There's a difference between, again, beliefs and convictions. 
Believe is something that you were born with. Believe is something that you are told to do. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. This is belief. This is something that is instruction that you have been given. Convictions is what you believe in heart. It may take a lot of time for the person to be fully convinced with what he believed in. Maybe social interaction, maybe you know, tragic events in life, you know, things that happen to you in your life, what makes you actually, this is the faith that I'm choosing for myself. Huh? You can tell your child, your, your son, or your daughter 100 times, don't come near the stove. Don't come near the stove. Don't come near the stove. And in the end, he goes near the stove and he gets his finger burnt. The, the first one was the, huh? the beliefs, the second one was the conviction. Now he's convinced. Now he's convinced that the stove burns. Same thing. What we do is that we give them instructions. We give the advice. We refute the misconception with the proof. We refute the illogical things with logic. If you're talking about logic, if you think that Islam do not or any religion do not follow, I, 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 I we need to correct you. Islam, alhamdulillah, is the logical faith. It's a faith that's built on rational belief and in Allah Azawajal and built on logic. If this is the case, we can talk longer about this, inshallah, in many upcoming, forthcoming Friday khutbahs, but this is something very important. Uh, open the conversation with your children. Have them, open, open your, have them open their hearts to you. Do not pretend that you are the Superman or the, uh, the one who's going to punish them. Let them bring out what inside of them. Without holding, uh, accountable without you know, blaming them. Let them speak to you. Maybe they have questions they are afraid to ask. And these questions are very easy to answer. These questions are very easy to answer. When they hear the answer, they will be comfortable. They will be confident about their faith. Huh? If they have a problem practicing any of the aspects of faith, just let it go for now. Don't, don't put the horse in front of the car or whatever the, the saying says. If they have problems about doing this, fasting or praying, or, or, or just do not make this the reason why you leave the religion. Let it go for now. And we, think can, we can work things out in the future. We want to establish the foundation, the base. I want to end by this story. I'm sorry again for taking so long. But I haven't been seeing the masjid that, that full for a long time. So I'm happy. One story that happened. In Iraq, a dear Arab and Muslim country, country to our heart, all time, long time ago, a man, he was not praying at all, wasn't praying at all. His neighbor was someone who used to frequent the masjid all the time. And then he was worried, he wanted to invite him to, to practice the faith. He said, why don't you pray with us? Why don't you come with us to the Masjid of Prayer? He said, look, I can't pray at all. Don't ask me about praying. I'm not praying at all. Why is that? Because this Fajr prayer, brother, I can never wake up for Fajr prayer. Forget it. I would never wake up for Fajr. So don't count on me. I'm not going to pray because of this Fajr prayer. He said, you know what? Is the Fajr prayer your only problem? He said, yes. He said, okay, don't pray Fajr. We have five prayers. Pray five, pray, pray four. I leave the Fajr prayer alone. He said, are you sure? He said, well, I, yeah, I'm sure. Pray the Lord and ask for Malab and Asha'at and don't worry about Fajr. So that man went to the masjid for the Lord and ask for Malab and Asha'at. He is so happy, he doesn't have to pray Fajr anymore. And then the people at the masjid got used to him, but they wondered why he doesn't show up for Fajr. So someone approached him and said, why don't you show up for Fajr? Well, Alhamdulillah, we're happy to see you coming to our masjid, but why don't you show up for Fajr? He said, Wait a minute, the Fajr prayer is not important. He said, who told you that? He said, my neighbor told me that Fajr prayer, I don't have to pray Fajr. And then they went to him, they locked him up, they accused him of kufr, of disbelief, that he negated one of the, of the most important prayers, the five prayers. They brought him in front of the judge as someone who made a statement that goes against the religion of Islam, huh? which will expel him out of the, the boundaries of faith that he negated one of the five prayers, which is one of the most important ones. And then he appeared in front of the judge and said, this man never set foot in the masjid. I made him pray four times. You made him pray the fifth. You make him pray the fifth. 
ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة Call upon your Lord Call upon the path of your Lord with wisdom and a beautiful advice Because sometimes this is one of the reasons why people back off We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to give us our wisdom and our, the mercy and to shower us with his blessing in this world and in the hereafter for Allah give us the best reward in this world and the best reward in the hereafter and to protect, protect us from the punishment of the fire for Allah forgive, forgive us our sins and our shortcomings and grant us the highest level of the paradise for the salat and alhamdulillah inna salatan ala fahshari wa al-munkar wa la dhikru allahi akbar wa allahu ala 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 tasma'una wa aqim salat Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وذل الذين اتخذوا دينهم لعبا وغرتكم الحياة الدنيا وذكر به أن تبزل نفس بما كسبت ليس لها من دون الله ولي ولا شفيع وإن تعدل كل عدل لا يخذ منها أولئك الذين أبسلوا بما كسبوا لهم شراب من حنين وعذاب أليم بما كانوا يكفرون
visiting Japan, if you want to uh, speak to you, I believe, are you going to be here to listen? Okay, so, so if you would like to uh, wait a minute or two just to listen, inshallah, to Assalamu alaikum I just mentioned one story about the Sahaba, then inshallah I'll finish with those that busy and here to us coming from the world. To stay fast in our deen, one of the most important things we have to give doubt about. If we don't 